Hey there, welcome back to the Big Ski family. Welcome Got back. At least a part of us, just two of us this time. Kind of a wonderful week we're having. Happy Valentine's Day to all you out there who are in a relationship or look forward to being in one someday. This week we want to talk a little bit about relationship and it's just interesting that with Valentine's week we were uh, fortunate enough to get a week away together, the two of us, and we've been on a cruise and it's done by a ministry called Family Life Today, a Christian organization that just really uh, reaches out to marriages and families and they put on a cruise called Love Like You Meet a Cruise and we today landed where? In St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Guys, if you want to see a little bit of we're standing on the loading dock just right. We just got off the boat. We're getting ready to go snorkel. But, a little different than snow. But a little different than snow, yes. And we wanted to hit two different things because as we're on this cruise, we're here for us. We're here to grow in our marriage. We're what we consider ourselves marriage investors. We're never arrived. We have never arrived. We're always at a place of learning and growing in our marriage, always. We're 26 years in, and I learned so much in the last few days about Janice and how to lovingly care for Janice. The Lord's really been doing a hard a work, a hard kind of work in my heart and mind over the last, uh, really last few weeks uh, leading up to this. But Janice, we're gonna talk about two things today about his needs. There's a book, His Needs, Her Needs, that uh, Dr. Archibald Hart, I believe it is, wrote. And um, I'm gonna start. I'll go first. You go first, please yeah. talk okay. to me. So I am constantly going through his needs, which are the five top needs are sexual fulfillment, oh, yeah. recreational companionship, Huge. attractive spouse, domestic support, and yes. respect and admiration. And I'm constantly going through that little list in my head going, how is he doing? How are we doing? And um, I was focusing on number two, recreational companionship, um, while we were on this trip because um, guys are always at their best when they are playing. And having fun with the one they love especially yeah and so a challenge presented itself there was something called the flow rider flow rider and all these guys were on this <coughs> water that's just you know going uphill and you get on a boogie board and you go down you know and there was just guys doing it and i thought you know i should really just push myself to do this my daughters were here all of them would do it they're such good examples of me and in the past i've kind of hidden and I've gotten used to being on the sidelines because I'm always at a baby that I'm nursing or you know taking care of children or whatever and I've been very happy to do that but you know it's time to come out from behind the veil there and get back to my recreational outdoorsy self and I have to push myself a little bit and so I just decided to go for it into those places and play and I because we're sharing an experience now I get to see 
get to share what we learned and doing that, trying that, and it's just always encouraging and inspiring to me. And again, she's, I think guys, we want a plane. We want someone who can go alongside of life with us and share the adventure as well as the toil and the, and the you know, childbirth training and the family and all the, the responsible stuff. It's just fun to get out and play. We keep your marriage to our marriage really fresh. On my side, it's interesting because guys have these needs and women have these really great important needs too. And the first one for them is affection. And the second one is one I was talking about. Sexual Of course, of course. Right. Just, just I love you. Not even all that necessarily. But yes, affection, right? So showing up affection. The second one is communication. Communication. The third one was openness and transparency. The fourth, I think, was family support. And uh, financial support and the fifth was finding uh, family support. And I've been focusing a lot, the Lord's really been working on me with communication. I feel like I'm a communicator, and I am, but what was interesting, and some of you may consider yourself, well, I'm a communicator, we talk. How do you talk? And I've learned that I talk to my wife often in ways that are not really I've been short with my words. I've been uh, very curt or very um, sarcastic at times and especially this last year for whatever reason the Lord's really revealed to me that I have fallen away from loving my wife with my words and loving her with the way that I respond to her and that I've been scripture says love is not easily provoked and I've let littlest things like the nothingest things kind of be a trigger or like provoke me like why why would you ask that or why would you say that or why would you do that or why don't you do this way or just impatience and immaturity on my part and I think it, part of it has been because you've had a lot of pressure this past year I've had I've had so. a you know what there's no excuse yeah. life is full of challenges and pressures yeah. and things and I've got to walk with the Lord and you mm -hmm. regardless of what the trial or tests are going on in my life yeah. But I've realized that I was inappropriate. And, and she communicated to me that I was that way. And I was like, wow, because it had actually become a way of being for a while. And that's what scares me, that I had let this become a pattern. And I've had to really slow down and say, Lord, do a work in my heart and help me to nourish. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I want to cherish my wife continually. I want my words to bring life. I want my words to build her up. I only want my words to make her more of who God created her to be. And I don't want any of my communication to take her away from that. And so I'm just, I'm a student right now of, of paying attention to my words and how I honor my wife and communicating to her and do it in a loving way and in a gracious way and in a patient way. And God is already doing a work and I have really seen the difference. I feel very cherished and we've had some really good long conversations. And I think that's why it's so important to be able to get away and just be able to have the bandwidth and yeah. the brain space to just calm down. And, you know, cause a lot of times things would be going on and just life was happening too fast. I was like, I don't want to burden him and be talking about this cause he can't hear it right now. But we've had a chance to just be and so yeah. I've been able to really share, hey, this is the way I've been feeling, and yeah. I'm gonna cry. And I, and anyway, I, we're just about to cry, baby. It's loving it's really it. been awesome, and yeah. um, I've really appreciated your long suffering and patience. And I want to share. Uh, thank you. I'll tell you what. We we are we are in this for the whole whole duration, and we're in it for all of it, and and we're never done learning. Are growing and I think if there's a word of encouragement here today it's no matter where you're at in your journey you know ask the Lord and then ask your spouse hey how can I love you better what can I do for you what 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 can I do to grow because there's always a little something and sometimes a big something that the Lord wants to touch your heart and, and help you grow and and love is is learning like that it's growing through those things it's not just all romance and and sh and, and all the all the fun that's there but it's it's the work of it. It's the work and, and the and the roots that need to be tended and cared for. And wanna, it's amazing how much closer you feel too after you've worked through things. Like oh, wow, I really oh, feel understood and heard. Oh. And well, it's you, oneness. Yes, it's true oneness. It's intimacy, and right? Your relationship actually gets better. You think it's going to get worse, or you know, like I don't want to tackle that problem. But really, when you tackle it and work through it, you're so much closer. And yeah. Yes want to say one last resource yeah. that you might want to consider. I'm reading a book by Gary Thomas called Cherish. And if you're a guy 
Um, and maybe some of you ladies, it's written for a married couple, but it, it's been really ministering to me around, I love those words, nourish and cherish. To me, that's the ultimate definition of love. If Denise feels cherished, she feels, feels nourished and knows she's nourished, then I, I, I'm fulfilling the role I, I play in this marriage. And that book has just been a great resource. I've been reading it slowly over the last uh, couple weeks and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. I'm not done with it, but it's doing a work in me and it may be a resource for you. So guys, again, we are on a cruise. Um, I just want to quit, do a quick shout out to Family Life today. Um, if you need a marriage refresher, they have different levels of resources. And I just want to give you a couple plugs. Uh, they have one called The Art of Marriage, and it's literally, there's a book and there's a, a little course, a little simple study guide that you can do in the comfort of your own home or with a couple other couples. There's a weekend to remember, which is a weekend where you get away and it's in your local community. I know they do one in Sun River, Oregon, where we are. They do them all over the US. And again, it's a quick refresher, to time to get away, time to have these kinds of conversations. This one is one that we heard about a couple years ago and, and this year decided to take that leap. Um, but it's a, it's a cruise and it's a week long, focused on marriage, speakers, uh, music. music, musicians, Panels, all focused questions. on building up Christian marriage and just a really fun time of recreation, playing, meeting and ministering with other couples. Um, and we've just had a, an absolute ball. And, and so just there are some, and here's the thing, you don't need any of those things. You could just schedule a date night right now and yes. pack a picnic lunch and go sit in your car and have a really powerful conversation. So yes. marriage isn't tricky as far as the setting or the environment or whatever, and you don't need to be, I mean, we're in a, loving and being in a sweet little spot, but there, it happens in, in the daily grind and, and grabbing a moment and getting a babysitter if you have those little kids and, and getting time away. Anyways, anything else you wanna say before we go? I don't think so. Go love your husband. Go love your husband. Go, go love play. your wife. Do go something play. fun. And communicate in a way that honors. Yes. Anyways, happy Valentine's Day from us to you. And uh, yeah, love you from St. Thomas, Virgin Islands.